Beethoven's A major sonata is a highlight in our repertoire. By going through the first movement and analyzing it a little bit, I'll try to find the reasons for this judgment. You just heard the first half of the first theme. This opening very often causes headaches for the performing cellists. Not only because we start the piece alone without piano. The theme itself is very demanding concerning phrasing and following that fingerings. In this case we have to play like a piano. That means we have to avoid unnecessary shifts and slides. The first one we cannot avoid. So we have to execute it very gently. We put the second finger down and glide very, very gently into the E. Then we stretch here. We change positions unhearably. Here we stretch again and another stretch. slide. The bow is responsible for the phrasing. We use different bow speeds. The beginning is relatively slow in the bow, but now going to the F sharp, we use a faster bow and slow it down again. Slow bow in the beginning, fast and wider vibrato, why only the first half? The second half is being played by the piano and after introducing the entire theme, Beethoven repeats it, this time the other way around. The piano starts and we take over the second part. This is the first part. Now the piano comes in. Now the piano starts the theme. Now we come in. Now we take over. It is very characteristic for Beethoven's composing that he splits themes between different voices or instruments. Here it is a sign for how sophisticated he understands the partnership between cello and piano. After we heard the first theme twice, he gives us the head of the theme, but now in a minor and much more dramatic. Of course, this is presented twice with exchanged roles. Then Beethoven reaches the second theme, which consists of two equally important parts. One is the scale going up and the other one is a broken chord moving down. In the first version of the second theme, we start with the scale. <laughs>
This was the second theme. And again, we have to play the scale like on a piano. There are many versions of different fingerings. I find this one has proved to be very practical. We have a stretch here and then a tiny shift. Only half, only a half step. with the old finger and put the new finger down without sliding. Same thing with the other scale. Stretch, half step. Now a slide with the old finger. the same thing. You slide on the one and put the thumb on the B without sliding into it. The bow is responsible for very smooth string crossings. It always anticipates the new string. And again, the second theme is played twice too with exchanged roles. This time the piano plays the scales and we play the broken chord going down. part derived from fragments of the first theme. Actually, I would call it the third theme. That would make it easier for us. This theme is taken from the last bar of the first theme. And again, it is very typical for Beethoven to derive whole themes from short ideas. Here you have to play very loudly, as loud as you can because usually the piano covers you entirely, although you play the theme there. This following scale causes problems because you come from playing very loudly and you have to switch to very light playing. The bow must be very light and you extend a little bit the first B, then you shift in the described way always slide with the old finger and put the new finger on its place now we are in the development section and it wouldn't be the Beethoven A major sonata if the dialogue between cello and piano wouldn't be consequently continued. Here he works with fragments of the first theme, like or or 
then he reaches a very dramatic passage where the piano has the theme and we accompany it. <laughs> Finally, he comes to the, from my point of view, climax of this movement. I mean this bar. If you know Bach's St. John's Passion, you know where it is taken from. It comes from the alto aria with the viola da gamba solo. Beethoven quotes the motive exactly just a whole tone higher. He starts on G-sharp Bach started on F-sharp and in the main theme of this movement we have it starting on E. We realize that the motive of the passion is the heart of the main theme of this movement. Finally, he reaches the recapitulation and here for the first time we hear the first theme entirely played by the cello. The second theme is, according to the rules, in a different key than the first time. Like in the first part, we play the second theme two times with exchanged roles and have the energetic passage following it, the third theme. Beethoven finishes the movement with a coda, presenting us the first theme in a grand manner. fade out by repeats of this figure. mark and the movement is over. The quality of the theme, which is, as we heard, at least inspired by Bach, if not a conscious quotation, and the formal fantasy and mastery are the reasons for the fame of this movement. And the fame is truly deserved. Now you go, find a pianist 
and enjoy the dialogue. Thank you for your interest. Take care and so long.